It's been quite a while since I've had an update video on my Gen 3 KLR. I've now had the bike since I believe about March of 2022. It's now November of 2023. So about a year and a half or so. Uh, the name of the video is mainly to poke fun at the KLR haters out there. Uh, you either love the KLR or you hate it. But anyway, I'll go through um, just some of the things I've learned over that amount of time having the bike. Um, for those of you that have watched my videos in the past, you can see I've finally changed my tires out. This tire, I could be butchering the name, Hydendu or something like that, a K60. I basically picked this tire off of Rocky Mountain because it's supposed to last a really long time. Uh, you can see the tread wear on it. That's about 3,000 miles. Um, I've brought my other tires out so you can see the difference. So this is the stock tire on about 3,000 miles. So that is a massive difference. Um, as far as this tire, the reason I got it is because I commute to work a lot on my bike and I needed something I don't change out every few months. Uh, the front tire, here's the stock one. I'll put that one up for comparison. I got the equivalent uh, front tire. Uh, same brand as the rear. To be honest with you, I do not like the front tire at all. Um, the rubber is pretty hard, and I don't know what's different about it, but the bike feels a bit more unstable at about 75 miles an hour than with the stock. So um, I'll just kind of do a quick walkthrough. Exhaust, uh, no real change. Uh, I basically got it because it's a lot lighter. You can see I don't have the... Uh, side panniers on right now when i have all that weight on the back it changes the center of gravity of the bike so i definitely don't like to run them if i don't have to so since i'm just kind of commuting around this is my normal setup um the stand here i found two good uh, uses for that it's mainly for changing the tires when i get a flat or washing the bike other than that, it's kind of bulky. It does interfere uh, when you go off-road with rocks and ruts and whatnot. So uh, just one thing to keep in mind if that's something you're going to buy. I would highly recommend pegs for anybody that does buy it. Get some pegs that you like. The suspension, it's about due for service. Um, great suspension. It's the best KLR suspension you can get. You've watched my previous videos. I have some more detail on it. Uh, the oil. You can see it's looking a little low now it's just because it's not level. Uh, every time I've changed oil, it does leak a little bit out of the filter right here initially for not too long. Um, you basically have to grease the O-ring, um, get a brand new O-ring each time, torque it perfectly. It'll still leak just a little bit. So I don't know if it's just my bike, but I've seen people with other KLRs have similar issues. Um, the thermo bob put that on pretty early on my bike does not burn oil uh, I pretty much change oil regularly in it and No issues with the oil um, You can see I put some crash bars on mainly for looks The bike has been dropped twice total now one is that Virginia City video the other my buddy was riding my bike tipped it over once he stopped um, the main reason is because this bike is pretty tall and he was not prepared for it. Um, let's see. So going up to the bars, the mirrors, uh, they're okay. Um, I use the throttle lock sometimes, not that often. Uh, definitely uh, get new bars if you like to stand up. Those other bars are pretty much sit down only, but you will increase vibration once you change bars. Uh, the Tire pressure sensors. I think I spent like 50 bucks on that. I love that thing. Um, it doesn't read that accurately, but it definitely lets me know when there's uh, like a leak in the tire or whatnot. Um, um, I'm trying to remember what this is called at the moment, um, but basically put it on. One of the first things I did with the bike. Uh, it never gets loose or anything. Uh, the bike's rock solid. I don't know what it's like without it. Skid plate. And we commented about the tire earlier. I did put a new GPS on. I broke the first two. Uh, they are basically trash. I just got this one off of eBay for like 50 bucks. But it's been on here for quite some time. And I've never had issues with that one. 
So the bolts, especially these ones, um, you have to snug up regularly. They will come loose and uh, bolts up here in the fairing as well. Uh, my chain, I think I made an adjustment early on when I got the bike. After that, it hasn't stretched or anything. It stays well within limits. So uh, it's been a good bike. I really like it a lot, but let's go for a ride and we'll talk about it some more. Okay, so total miles on the bike, 6,377. And I got most of that over the summer uh, commuting to work. It's a little cold now, so I don't ride it that much. It's actually been, I don't know, a few weeks since I've ridden it. So, yeah, we'll get going here. So, those of you guys that have followed my channel for a while, uh, I did move into Northern California. New job, new life. So, uh, the previous videos are mostly desert stuff. So, um, the KLR does do well out there. Uh, however, I would say roads and um, terrain like this is where the KLR really shines. Um, for the KLR haters out there, the bike is made cheap on purpose. Um, and that is the reason that a lot of people buy it. Um, the two main reasons that I bought the bike was cost and reliability. Uh, I all see comments every so often about um, there's much better bikes out there. I'd say true, but um, I don't think you're going to find one that's as well-rounded. So if you go on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the most extreme off-road, 10 being a um, complete road bike, the KLR sits at a perfect 5. Um, if you go with a lot of the other bikes, um, you're, you're going to have to cut costs somewhere. So you're going to have it be uh, better on the road and worse off-road or better off-road and worse on the road. So the KLR is definitely uh, right in the middle. If anybody can point out a bike that uh, hits the same criteria, let me know. But I have yet to see anything that um, really matches that. So we'll make a left out here. Uh, we're going up into Eagle Lake. So today's mission, I'm going to try to um, get on this dirt road I haven't been on in probably 20 years. It cuts uh, through the mountains on the back side of the lake. Um, and maybe do some scouting for some oak. I'm sitting on about four cords of wood right now for the winter. Uh, I want to get about a cord of oak uh, to finish it off. Uh, so this road right here, uh, pretty windy. Um, I can pretty much, if I want to, just leave the KLR in like fourth gear and just go all the way to the lake. Uh, it's about 15 minutes to the lake itself uh, from my house there. So I'm just kind of lugging fourth gear right there. I uh, had my uh, fiance on the back of the bike uh, once coming up here. And same thing, I mean, I can just leave it fourth all the way up. Uh, the bike is fun to ride uh, through areas like this. Um, where the bike really starts to kind of fall flat is when you're riding on the freeway um, at high speeds. And that's kind of to, to be expected. I mean, if there's one thing I wish this bike had is that, that sixth gear. Uh, this bike's only a five speed. So, um, this bike is awesome for like uh, things like I'm doing today. I mean, I can go up and scout much faster than I would if I was ride, driving my truck. Uh, and I don't have to go like load my dirt bike up, unload it and whatnot. I can just ride this thing. Um, in most places that I can take a four-wheel drive vehicle. I haven't run into a lot of places yet that um, I couldn't take it. My most extreme riding with it's probably earlier in my videos for the most part. You know, this bike is a commuter. It's for fun. I'm not going to uh, jump it anymore. I mean, I've jumped it when I first got it, doing that kind of stuff, but you can't sustain it you know you're gonna break something on the bike the bike's not made to do that sort of stuff and if you're sitting here you know as heavy as the bike is putting that much strain on it it's just not going to uh, hold up you're gonna crack your frame do something um i've not changed out the uh, doohickey yet i'll probably do that in the winter time 
thick as a bike for the most part. I mean, it snows a lot up here. Uh, there's probably a good 10 feet of snow up here last year. So the bike's not coming out for a few months. So I'll do a lot of my maintenance at that time on my bike. Uh, the oil, you pretty much, for this bike, for the most part, it's such low maintenance. You change the oil and go. I mean, it's really, that's the main reason I got the bike in the first place. Um, it's not fast, but it's not boring either. I mean, I've ridden slower motorcycles before. I mean, this bike, I think it only puts off like 40 horsepower or something, but I mean, do I really need to go that much faster through all this stuff? I mean, if, if you want to do that, that's off to you, but I think most of the people that buy this bike uh, want something simple, something reliable, and they want to be able to modify it a lot. Um, let's see, the battery, I got the battery, uh, the stock battery lasted a little less than a year. I could replace it under warranty. But I said screw it and bought one of those batteries that uh, if it dies, you can press the button and it'll jumpstart itself. I also have uh, this jumpstart thing I carry with me too, like a little battery pack uh, just in case because definitely some of the places I bring this thing, I do not like to be stranded. Um, so the, the panniers that I have, um, I can get different ones. Um, and put them on the same racks I have right now. I just have those tusk like metal ones. The main reason I got those uh, is kind of two reasons. So one, I can lock them, and two, they can keep everything dry. Um, I did take the bike up to Medford, Oregon for a couple weeks this summer. Uh, parked it outside the hotel uh, every night, you know, and I was kind of worried about somebody breaking into the bike, but for the most part, everybody left it alone. I was able to keep my stuff locked in there. Uh, no issues with it. Uh, the, in hindsight, I wish I would have just spent extra money to go with two more Pelican cases like the one I have on the back. Uh, because I kind of like that. I kind of went for that military zombie apocalypse look on a bike. Um, and I thought that would have turned out a lot better. I could have bought the same racks that I have now and just drilled into the boxes. Uh, maybe in the future, but I don't really need to right now. I really don't run my panniers that often. I keep my bike as light as possible because it does uh, handle much differently when you put that much weight in the back. I mean, you put 30, 40 pounds in the, the rear. Um, the bike's just, it's not as fun to ride. So just pretty light going today. Uh, with the tires, I just run heavy duty tubes in them. I haven't had any flats with these yet. I mean, you can always get flats, but I kind of run run those and I don't really take it anywhere extreme nice day out today it's supposed to be 70 degrees today it's supposed to be almost 80 degrees uh, in two more days and here we are mid-october in northern California up in the mountains the bike corners well uh, and stuff like this these tires I mean they, they work fine the front tire the reason I said I don't really like it is so it, it kind of creates an instability of the bike uh, that I didn't notice before at least when you're high speeds I kind of noticed it when I was riding through traffic in Reno and I'm trying to pass this truck and then if you kind of do this little move of the bike here you kind of move it like that a little bit it just feels uncomfortably stable unstable you know uh, so these tires, I've ridden this thing through the mud, I've ridden through the sand, I mean a lot in Nevada still. Um, heavy thunderstorms, heavy rain, all that stuff, and uh, they do just fine. Uh, one thing about the rain with this bike I've noticed uh, is the way the fairing and windshield is on it. Um, if you can keep it going above 50 miles an hour, the wind kind of creates this buffer so you can kind of hide behind it and you don't even really get wet. Um, if it starts raining really hard, you're gonna get wet no matter what. But again, it's usually summertime, so if you got wet, you know, and 10 minutes later, you're completely dry. Um, but I shoot, I think throughout like May and June, it, there's thunderstorms like every day, and that's when I was still kind of working in Nevada and living in California, so I'd go back and forth a lot. Uh, mileage. Uh, let's, we'll talk about fuel gauge real quick. So fuel gauge is absolutely worthless in this bike. Um, 
it reads so inaccurately. Um, I pretty much go off the odometer um, for my mileage, but you have to kind of pay attention to the type of riding you're doing right now because um, I can hit about 52 miles per gallon if I'm riding 55, 60 miles an hour on the way to work on mountain roads like this. But once I kind of get out in the open, I'm going faster, it'll burn the fuel up more quickly. I was coming back from Oregon. I actually took this route up this hill and I think I was 160 miles or so on my odometer and then my uh, low fuel light started this show. So, um, and it was because I was going uphill once I kind of crested the hill and it was going downhill, then it wasn't really indicating anymore. Uh, when I did fill the bike up, there's basically two gallons in the, uh, the tank remaining. Um, so you're supposed to get the fuel light at one gallon, but with the way the fuel is sitting in the tank, uh, at about two gallons is when I got the fuel indicator. And it's not a light so much, it's a little, I don't know if you can make it on camera, but this little fuel indicator uh, will start flashing at you. Um, it doesn't make any noise or anything like that, it just starts flashing. So. Um, I know that it, I'll go about 200 miles uh, back and forth to work um, and that's kind of my comfort zone. Um, if I'm traveling and using a lot of RPM, I'll probably stop about every 150 miles or so to fill up. And you kind of want to anyway because that's a long time to be on the bike. Um, about the comfort on the bike, uh, this thing is more comfortable than any street bike I've had. Mainly because, you know, I, I got some back issues, so it's like the way that I have to sit up, uh, if I'm on a street bike, you're kind of stuck in that same position. Um, on this thing, I can sit up really straight, I can bend over, I can move back, move forward, I can stand up, um, so I can go much longer distances. Uh, when I was going up to Medford, it was about four and a half hours on the bike. That's probably the longest I've done, like, uh, on the road at least. Um, your butt hurts on the seat but it's not that bad um, you can probably get a, another seat uh, that's more comfortable but um, I don't know why seats are so expensive I mean you're probably what like eight hundred dollars in on a seat so if that's something that is important to you then it's, it'll cost you um, vibrations um, I basically removed a lot of the anti-vibration stuff they put in the bike uh, when I put the bars on and the pegs and all that stuff. The vibration's not bad. I mean, I don't even notice it right now. I can feel it. Uh, the more RPM you have, the worse it gets. But it doesn't bother me. What I do notice it is when I stop. Like, if you try to text or something on your phone and you've been riding for like an hour or hour and a half or something like that, uh, your fingers are just vibrating. Um, so... Yeah, it's one thing the KLR has been kind of notorious for. Um, but that's one of those things you know when you buy the bike. So, can you get other bikes more comfortable to ride? Absolutely. But, one, you're going to pay a lot more money for it. And, two, you're sacrificing off-road capability. Um, and then I've had another body, buddy that had uh, a KTM. Um, you know, it's doable on the road, much better off-road. But... Um, I, I can imagine that bike really sucks going long distance. But this bike on this kind of terrain is, or this kind of road, I should say, it's kind of perfect for the KLR. Because that's kind of right and I like to do anyway. Even if I had a comfortable street bike, you know, riding through a wind tunnel 80 miles an hour is not my idea of a good time. You know, riding around exploring is uh, where I like to be. So this road that we're going to, uh, so it cuts on the east side of Eagle Lake uh, by the Ronald McDonald camp and kind of pops out near, uh, I think it's uh, Chico State University, has uh, some buildings and stuff out there. We had sixth grade camp out there when I was a kid. Um, I remember when I did take it once, I had to use four-wheel drive in my Ford Ranger at the time that I had. Um, and here we are you know kind of fall now so hopefully a lot of the the ruts and all the stuff that i remember being in the road is kind of gone because i think i hit it like in early summer before um i don't know if i'm going to come up to a lock gate uh, 
on the road or not, so we'll see. I mean, this could be a pretty short-lived trip. Um, as far as, let's see, trying to think of some of the questions people have had. Uh, a lot of that stuff is answered in other videos. Uh, I think most people just kind of watch uh, one video and then, uh, or a partial part of the video and then uh, ask questions about it. Um, I remember one guy was saying it had, he had some real significant power issues. Um, the bike just didn't have anything. Uh, this bike is plenty for me. Um, one guy did comment on my video that his KLR would blow mine out of the water kind of thing. Um, let's see, so I'll go full throttle right now. And I wasn't in a very good RPM range right there. So it goes pretty good, right? So he said his a lot faster. I would not be surprised. I haven't done a lot of research on it, but this is a California emissions uh, level bike. So I would not be surprised if the uh, throttle body just doesn't open up uh, that much. Um, because I can probably modify it to where it opens up more, I get more power, but I don't really need it. I haven't found a reason for me to need it. The only thing I really wish this bike had is more top end speed. Um, when I'm at 75 miles an hour or 80 miles an hour on this bike, the, the bike generally, minus that little shimmy I told you about, is pretty stable. Um, it just doesn't really have power, so if I'm cruising at like 70, 75, something like that, and I need to pass somebody, there's not really power in reserve. Better get our last few rides in before it snows. It can snow up here at any time. It's supposed to be warm this week, cold next week. But I think once it snows, this thing's going up for the year. Uh, now I have been commuting, like I said, on this bike. It's about 35 miles through mountain roads um, every day, each way. And, you know, I cruise about 60 on it. It's real comfortable. I'd say most average fuel mileage you get, fuel mileage I get is about probably 48 miles a gallon. Um, I've seen as much as 52. Now, if I've seen as low as probably about 40, 38, 40 miles a gallon. So it can vary quite uh, widely. If you're trying to get max range out of this bike, um, dirt roads 35 40 miles an hour without using much rpm you can get some pretty good range out of it because that's one of the reasons i got this bike is because it has a big tank on it um some of the other competitors out there uh, i mean they're like four gallon tanks this is a 6.1 gallon tank so uh, range is uh critical when you're out in the middle of nowhere and that's what this bike is used for you know all over the world is um, you know, very austere environments, you know, riding the uh, Horn of South America kind of uh, rides. So let's see if we can find this road up here. Um, so the wind right now, the, the windshield the way it, it kind of makes the wind go right up to my face. When I'm sitting down, as tall as I am, I'm getting wind about eye level. It'd be nice if I could completely eliminate any buffeting, because the buffeting does kind of suck uh, when you're following trucks and stuff. Alright, so moment of truth. Let's see if this gate's locked back here. Right here, before we do that, just for those of you that maybe uh, haven't seen Eagle Lake for a while, um, so this is a natural lake. There's like one river coming into it. The old Indians uh, basically said something about uh, there was no lake there and then all of a sudden there was a lake there. Um, so it doesn't have a whole lot of watersheds coming into it to fill it up. Which kind of sucks because all the other reservoirs are full this year because we had the record uh, year. Let's look at the marina down here and show you how low it is. So this is a pretty big lake. A lot of people come from all over the place to fish here. So here's the old marina. I remember when I was younger, I used to launch boats down here, have all the docks, you know, come up to the marina and stuff, and it's still that low. Even after that winter, I don't know how many winters it'll take to fill that up, so I'm gonna cruise down to the dock real quick. And that's one thing I've been doing lately is bringing my boat up here. It's, like I said, that's however long the video so far, that's how long it takes to get here.
but Eagle Lake Trout, people come from all over to fish up here. This lake is cold, uh, not the best for swimming. Uh, it has leeches in it. So if I come up here, it's primarily gonna be for fishing. There's a bunch of other lakes close by that are warmer and better for swimming and pulling the kids in the tube and stuff. All right, let's go find this road. So one complaint I saw about these tires online was they suck in gravel roads. They do about the same as the stock tires I had. That's some pretty common comments I get in some of my videos are how much they hate my tires. Um, <laughs> dude, everybody has different needs and wants. I can definitely get some more aggressive off-road tires for this bike, but and with how much I rode in the summertime especially, I'd be changing tires out every month. These tires barely have any uh, wear on them. When I bought them, I expected about two years until I have to replace them, and so far it's proving to be true. Alright, let's hope this road's still open. Cal Fire truck up here. So I don't really remember what this camp uh, is for exactly. Uh, the Ronald McDonald camp. I think it's for like is it kids that have like medical issues or something like that. Special needs kids. I remember when you used to go to McDonald's, you used to always like donate to the Ronald McDonald camp. Put it back in here somewhere. See a road zigzagging up the mountain. It's a good little KLO road. It's been at least 20 years since I've been back right here. I don't even remember where anything goes. And I don't know if this is even open anymore, this Ronald McDonald camp. You can see the grass is fairly new. The facilities are maintained still, so maybe they, like in the summertime, do little camps for the kids. Some of the cabins. All right, let's see where this goes. pavement ends. Yeah, if this is the same road that I remember before, I remember getting pretty ready way back up in here. And this is why I don't have a straight street bike anymore, so I can do this kind of stuff. See if we get any views of the lake from up here. Rocky, no matter where I go. In Nevada or California. So we're talking about temperatures of the bike. Right now I'm pushing 167. It's kind of a cool day out. Um, it'll start climbing while I climb this because I'm using more RPM and not sucking that much air into the engine. I've ridden this bike 112 degrees, slow traffic. When that little fan kicks on, I think it kicks on about 219 degrees. It'll cool it down back in the 190s. Um, so it does pretty good. If that fan is broke or something, then you really got to pay attention because your bike will overheat. But I have not had any overheating issues with this bike. Far as road's pretty easy. I mean, it's not, you can see that people have driven on it uh, recently. I mean, within the last day or two with the tracks. 
man i was out here on the lake the other day on the boat it was pretty windy everybody else was pretty much back into shore and i strayed way down here further and then on the way back that was a rough ride i don't think i've ever taken my boat and water that rough before it was it seemed like forever i broke my little battery mounts in the bike so i had some show up or in the in the boat so i had some show up the other day that i got to put in the boat again before we go out but yeah definitely like the mountain roads in this thing it does really well i mean i could be out here with my panniers and all that stuff on and go exploring some people take these things on some pretty um ah, there's some of the old uh some pretty austere places see i'm just lugging whatever gear i'm in right now Let's see kind of see down the lake there but yeah I'm, I'm certain this is the road but you get down in here and there's i'm trying to remember the name there's this tunnel that they built like i don't know the early part of the century like early 1900s late 1800s something like that to take a lot of the water out of the lake and put it into the honey lake valley and then that ended up being a pretty boneheaded idea because the lake does not regenerate water that well um, and the lake really doesn't have any places i'm aware of that like drains water so it just gets water from like one creek and whatever a little bit of watershed it has around here and doesn't really expel water this lake was almost like one side was completely dry and then i flew over this in a helicopter this would have been probably 2015 or so and it was really low so the lake looks a lot better than it used to a few years ago but anyway um that's about it for updates in the klr um it's been a good bike i mean i ride it a lot in the summertime uh, take it out places like this go scout for wood um you know it's it's perfect for this kind of stuff so if you're on the fence about buying a klr it really comes down to your your needs your your wants and then uh, how much money you're willing to uh, put on the table because yeah i mean I, i'd be having fun on like yamaha or something out in here or honda uh, but man those things are a lot more expensive than this bike is and i question the reliability so anyway we'll wrap it up there and uh maybe we'll do another update video uh, before too long all right see ya